Hello there, God bless you. This is Pastor Prophet Johnson coming here live from the glorious city of Las Vegas. Listen, the Lord Jesus Christ loves you absolutely, altogether, infinitely more than you can imagine. And what he want to return is for you to love him back again. The Lord Jesus Christ loves you absolutely, altogether, infinitely more than you can imagine. And what he want in return is for you to love him back. I want to thank you for on tonight being with me. You could be anywhere on tonight, but you have decided to tune in to the Divine Kingdom broadcast. The church where your royalty is realized and your destiny is fulfilled. Again, the Lord Jesus Christ loves you. He's not upset at you. He's not angry at you. He's not mad at you. All the anger he had towards you, all the anger God the Father had towards you was poured out upon his son Jesus at Calvary Cross. I want to talk to you briefly on the topic. I want to talk to you briefly on the topic of Obama, Trump, Biden, the Antichrist. Who is this fellow? Who is the Antichrist? We're going to come there from the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 through 5. And again, we see there, I like that fourth verse. It said, let no man deceive you by any means. Again, let no man deceive you by any means. Now, this is so important to, to, to understand. I know we are living in the last days. As a matter of fact, the last days started over 2,000 years ago when the day of Pentecost was fully come. The book of uh, Joel said in the last days, God's going to pour out his spirit. Hallelujah. And that took place at Pentecost. The last days started 2,000 years ago. And if the last days started 2,000 years ago, how close are we to the last day? We are close. We are close. We are close. We are close. One of the most important things for believers to do today, like we should always done, walk in the love of God. Though I have the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, have not love, it profits me nothing. What would it profit me to know word, know the word, know all languages, but don't have agape? Don't walk in the love of God. What would it profit me? So again, I want to talk to you about the Antichrist. Who is this fellow? What is he going to do when he come? Is he here already? Is Obama? Is Trump? Is Biden the Antichrist? And the question, the answer to those questions is, I don't believe Obama is the Antichrist. I don't believe Trump is the Antichrist. I don't believe Biden is the Antichrist. But if you got to look, at, you got to look at this, the nature of this fella. You got to look at the nature of this fella. Now, it's not a joke or a game, friend. Now, if we as the church, if we as the church fall for the, the practices, the lies and the schemes and the promises of mere men, if we let mere men convince us, if we allow mere men to deceive us, we are not going to be a match to the Antichrist. Listen, my brother, my sister, the Bible lets us know, except those days be shortened, no flesh shall be saved. And it would be one thing if this was a fairy tale. It would be one thing if this wasn't true. But guess what, my brother, my sister? This is true. The Bible is right. God bless you, prophet. George, the Bible is right. Hallelujah. You can, you can rest your eternity upon it. You can rest your word. You can rest your life upon the word of God. The Bible is right. And I don't care who say anything about it. The Bible is right. You know, the Bible said, let the word of God be true, but let every man be a liar. Let the word of God be true, but every man be a liar. The word of God is indeed 100% right. The first word in the Bible is in, and the last word in the Bible is amen. And everything from the first to the end is all right. It's all righteous. It is the written, physical, living word of God. And it is settled in heaven. Hallelujah. So the Antichrist is going to come on the scene. Let me say this here again now. If we allow mere men... If we allow men who put on their britches the same way you put on, we, we allow women to put on their dresses and skirts the same way you put yours on. If we let those folks deceive us, we're not going to be a match to the Antichrist. Now, listen, you are infinitely more than you could ever think you are. Let me say that again. You are absolutely altogether infinitely more than you think you are. You are beyond imagination. Listen, do you not know? Do you not know that you are created? You are created just a little lower than God Himself. You are so created, so close to God, and the only higher He can go in His creation, He would have to create you, Him. Woo! The only thing between you and God is God Himself. 
Hallelujah. You were created higher than angels. Lucifer one. Lucifer said, listen, I'm going to exalt my throne above the heights. Isaiah 14 and 14. I'm going to be like the most high. Hallelujah. But the most high did not make Lucifer like him. The most high made you like him. Created you in his likeness and his image. Now, listen, the Lord love you. He's not upset at you. He's not mad at you. You are infinitely more than you think you are. So again, Obama. See, a lot of folks think that the Antichrist is going to come. I'm the Antichrist. You know, he's not going to come mean. He's not going to come mad. He's not going to come evil. That fella is going to come smoother than butter. He's going to come smoother than a knife. He's going to be charming and charismatic. He's going to be peaceful. He's going to be loving and kind and wonderful. Keep in mind the word Antichrist, the word anti, in our English definition, anti means to go against, antipresent. Anti-freeze. Anti-presbyte goes against perspiring. Anti-freeze goes against freezing. But the Antichrist, we think it goes against the, goes against Christ, but it does, but in a different way. The Antichrist is coming to be a false Christ. He's coming to be a pretend Christ. He's coming to pretend though he is Christ. If you read there in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, we're going to read from the top down to the bottom. You're going to see that this fellow is going to come sitting in the temple of God professing himself that he is God. He's going to pretend to be the Messiah, the long-awaited Messiah. He's going to come loving and kind and wonderful and sweet. Listen, when President Trump came, he came as a wrecking ball. We know, we know he didn't come try to pretend to be Christ. We know that. But look at the one who came smoother than silk. He came and hit a three-pointer and he just ran off the course. This is what I do. Huh? Huh? But look, look, look at the policies of Obama. Look at the policies of, of Biden. Look at the policies of Trump. See, some of you didn't like Trump and still don't like Trump personality. But what policy of the Republican Party or of Trump you don't agree with? What policy of the Democrat Party you don't agree with? You can think of multiple policies. You know, I've had people on my top, on my Facebook page. They say, well, I'm, I'm a Democrat, but I don't agree with the Republican. I don't agree, agree with the policies of the Democrat. Why you, why you vote for them then? <laughs> you know why they said they vote? They vote for the Democrat because they didn't like Trump's personality. Did you, did you like Trump's policies? Well, I ain't got no problem with his policies, but his personality. Now, Trump going to be out of office in four years. Trump going to be out of office in four years, but his policies is going to remain. Obama been out of office in four years, and his damnable, his damnable destructive, destructive, ungodly policies remain. Right now, if a young girl go to the bathroom, here I am. I don't have to pretend to be a woman. I can just say I identify as a woman, and I can follow that young lady in the bathroom. Those are Obama policies. Those are the Democrat Party policies. Oh, my God. So some people say, see, a lot of folks say, wait, well, I like the personality of this person. You better vote policy. You better vote policy. Some of you can't stand President Trump because he's brush and he's, he's rash, and, and he say stuff that get out of your skin, get on your nerve. But look at his policies. What's that? You know what? I, I, be the first to give me a policy that the, of the Republican Party, the policy. I need a policy, not an attitude of a person, not a behavior of a person, but give me a Republican Party policy that disagrees with the Bible. Be the first to do that. And you, I'm going to inbox you or our Facebook, what they call it, cash app you $25. Give me a Republican Party policy that conflicts with the scripture and I end, and I cash at you $25 tonight. Now, if I ask you to give me a policy of the Democrat Party that conflicts with the Bible, I lose my $25. Huh? Because abortion completely against the Bible. Thou shalt not kill. Same-sex marriage. A man, what's that, Leviticus 20 and verse 10, a man who sleep with another man shall be put to death completely against the Bible. Romans chapter 1, verse 27, completely against the Bible. Huh? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. The Democrats voted not to have God in, in their platform. Huh? So again, many of you hate Trump. You can't stand him because of his rough personality. But what policy you dis you disagree with? Okay, watch this now. So Obama, if, if anybody of those three, Biden, Obama, or Trump, were the Antichrist, it would be Obama. But Obama is not the Antichrist.
He's not the Antichrist. And if you fall for Obama, you're not going to be a match for the Antichrist. If you fall, and I'm going to follow, I'm gonna follow Trump, I'm gonna, you know, listen, if you fall for a mere man, you ain't going to stand against the Antichrist. Look how that word of God opened up. There in verse 4, I think it is, he said, let no man deceive you. Huh? Let no man deceive you. Some of you are allowing your pastors to deceive you. Some of you are allowing your pastors to deceive you. Our black church need extreme serious help. We need help for any of joke or game. Now, we ought to love everybody. If we want to get to heaven, we better love everybody. If we want to get to heaven, we better first of all say, God, I'm, I'm a sinner. I, I deserve to go to hell. Forgive me. We need to repent of our sins if we want to go to heaven. Huh? First John 1 and 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful. The word confess means to agree with. I agree with you, Lord. I am a sinner deserving to go to hell, but I don't want to go to hell. Forgive me. Oh, forgive me. Jesus, save me. Once you do that, friend, now you're on the right track. Romans 10, 9 and 10, if you confess with your mouth, again, the word confess means to agree with God call us a sinner. What do you say? God called us a sinner. What do you say? Do you call yourself a sinner? If you, are, if you can say, I'm a sinner, I deserve to go to hell, you're on the first step to eternal life. So if God, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's 1 John 1 and 9. Then Romans 10, 9 and 10, if you confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, we shall be saved. Do you believe with your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead? Oh my God, I believe you believe that. Now at that point, guess what you want to do? You want to say, I'm going to follow Jesus. I'm going to obey the word of God. I'm going to leave my sin alone. <laughs> I'm going to put my crack pipe down. I'm going to put my cigarette down. I'm going to put my whiskey, my wine, my beer down. I'm going to leave my Mad Dog 2020. 20, 20. I'm going to leave my Thunderbird alone. I'm going to leave my cognac. I'm, I'm going to stop fornicating. I'm going to stick with my wife. I'm, I'm going to leave that man alone. That man, it ain't right for two pe Two penis is trying to come together. To wreck. Your rectum is exit only. Your rectum is exit only. Hallelujah, somebody. It ain't a joke or game, friend. God had, listen, 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 listen. God burnt down whole cities full of people because a man was trying to poke another man. A woman was trying to rub up against another woman. Hallelujah. God burnt down whole cities. God, listen, it's in your Bible. God destroyed the whole world. Everything in the world died. If you walked up on the earth and you breathe, you breathe air, you die. That's in your Bible. You can look at Genesis chapter 6 and you're going to see where it repented God. God said, I'm sorry that I made you. And he has not changed his mind. Hallelujah. You got somebody praying for you. You got somebody seeking the face of God for you. You better be thankful. Somebody pray for you. There's a song we sing. Somebody pray for me. Had me on their mind. Take out time and pray for me. And then they say, I'm so glad they prayed. You better be glad somebody praying for you. It ain't a joke or game, friend. You are absolutely altogether infinitely more than you think you are. You're not just a mere flesh and blood being. You are you are everlasting, eternal being that's going to live forever. You're going to live forever. But the question is, and it's your choice, where are you going to live? Huh? You know, we tell people, well, that's between them and God. Listen, you better not play with God. It ain't no joke. You better not play with God. You better tell that woman you better stop abortion. I knew, young, I knew a young lady years ago said she had nine abortions. Nine! Huh? Don't you know your conscience can become seared? Your conscience can become hard? That you don't feel convicted? You don't feel condemned anymore? You don't feel guilty anymore? Don't you know that's possible? Oh, sin ain't nothing to play with the Bible. Let's just know the book of Hebrews. I think it is chapter 3, probably verse 12. He said, lest any of you be hardened, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Sin would deceive you. 
Let your heart be hardened. Your conscience be hardened. You don't. You no longer feel guilty. You no longer feel condemned. You can smoke your crack. You, you, you can smoke in front of the church house. You can get in the pulpit and, and you're drunk. You're drunk. Raise your hand. I said raise your hand. And you're drunk. And you no longer feel condemned. You no longer feel guilty. You no longer feel bad. You okay with it. They call it a reprobate mind. Ain't that something? Oh God, you're sleeping, you're sleeping with her husband and, and her husband and you're sleeping with, and you're sleeping with him and you don't feel condemned anymore. The Bible said, let no man deceive you. Oh God, everybody, listen, everybody don't go to heaven when they die. Uh, some people actually go to a real burning place called hell and it's still real. The word hell is found 55 times, I think 45 or 54 times in the Bible. And Jesus spoke more about hell than anybody. How come, who made Jesus the authority of hell? He did because he the one created that old crazy, nasty, filthy place. Hell is a tough place. I'm telling you, hell is so mean. Hell is so nasty. Hell is so torturous that the devil himself doesn't want to go to hell. And you know that fella ain't going to hell. Don't you know that? Don't you know the devil's not going to hell? The devil's going to escape hell. That's right. It's in your Bible. The devil is going to escape that place called hell. The Bible lets us know Revelation chapter 20 and 10 and the devil that deceives them. Who, who did he deceive? Those who die in their sins. Those who, those who die in their sins. The devil deceived them. The devil got many church folks deceived. Smoking your Newport. Smoking your cools. You're making, making old. Smoking your marijuana. Huh? Huh? Snoring your cocaine. Huh? 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 And you think you're still saved? You sit back drinking with the preachers, going to the strip joints, going to the strip club, and you think you're still saved? You in a listen, you ain't saved. What you saved from? If you're still alive, what you saved from? If you're still fornicating, what you saved from? If you're still committing adultery, if you're still lying, cheating, and stealing, what are you saved from? The Bible said Jesus is coming back for a church without a spot or a wrinkle. He's coming back for a church without a blemish. And I'm telling you, there are going to be millions who are going to be deceived. They're going to come knocking, Lord, open unto us. And he's going to say, I never knew you. I never knew you. Huh? I don't know who you are. I command healing in your body right now. Those of you right now who sick, disease in your body, I command healing now in the name of Jesus. I command the pain to leave out of your body right now. I speak to the pain in your body. I speak to the crook in your mind. I command it to loose. The crook in your neck, I command it to be loose. In the name of Jesus. I command diabetes to die. In the name of Jesus. And God, we give you glory. We give you praise. Listen, the Lord Jesus Christ loves you more than you could absolutely imagine. And what he want to return is for you to love him back. Now again, now again, the Antichrist, the anti he's not a joke or game, friend. Obama doesn't compare the smoothness of Obama. Listen, this Obama, this man... He, it started with, well, I don't know exactly when it started, but Clinton was the one, don't ask, don't tell. Huh? 1992, don't ask, don't tell. If you want to join the military, don't, 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 don't identify yourself with us. We're not going to ask you. We're not, and don't you tell us. You can do what you want. And that was the last time I vote straight ticket Democrat. Huh? I voted straight ticket. I had a little white sister there in, the, there in East Lansing, Michigan, tried her best to get me to look at Ross Perot. But I'm, I'm black. And I got to vote Democrat. And that's how I voted. But when I voted Democrat in 92, and Clinton got in the office and did just what he said he was going to do, I said, God, please forgive me. I'm sorry. Forgive me, Lord. I never voted straight, take a Democrat again. I started voting those views who are closest to the Bible. Whatever policy, I didn't vote for I used to, I did not start voting. I hear people vote for the lesser of the two evil. God said, don't, don't vote that way. Vote for the policies that is closer to my scripture. And I said, okay, Lord. So I said, I'm going to vote for the views that are closest to the Bible. And that's who I started voting. Oh, it was a struggle. I'm black. I can't vote Republican. I'm black. But I kept it up. And I started voting. I started voting. Who, who, which, which party? Which party? Huh? And that's what I started doing. And I see the Republican Party's views are closer to the Bible. I'm saved. I can't kill baby. I don't believe in killing baby. I don't believe two men trying to poke each other. I don't believe two ladies trying to rub up against each other. It ain't a joke or a game, friend. And it matters. Or you judging. You better tell them it ain't a joke. Listen, God burnt down. God did it. He burnt up Sodom and Gomorrah. 
Sodom. He burned up Gomorrah. And then there was about five other cities. That disease, that evil practice began to spread. It was going to encompass the whole earth if God didn't cut that cancer out. You see some of our white brothers and white sisters, they see a speck on their arm. They say, what is this? You better go and get this checked out. And the doctor says, it's a cancer. You came just in time. I can cut it off right now. I, I, if you let me cut it out, you, it won't spread any further. But if you don't cut it out, it's going to take your whole arm. You're going to die. It ain't no joke, friend. And those homosexuals in the Bible, they start, they start building their clubs and their houses right next to the church. And how many churches today, how many houses of God, especially in the black church, homosexuals on the organ? Huh? Keyboard. There ain't no anointing. The Holy Ghost really came. No, 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 no. The devil is a lie. The Holy Ghost has absolutely nothing altogether, nothing to do with sin. God the Father has nothing to do with sin. Hallelujah. You know, one man said that sinners in the hands of an angry God. Woo! Sinners in the hands of a what kind of God? Angry God. God ain't playing. You think God going to allow himself to come in human flesh and die a terrible death at the hand of wicked men to let you go to heaven in your sin? I tell you not. So the Antichrist, that fellow's going to come and he's going to be smooth. It ain't no joke or game, friend. He's going to be smooth. He's going to be smooth. If you fall for smooth uh, Bill of Bill Clinton, and look at, the, look at the evil, look at the wickedness. Huh? Bill, uh, what was his name? Obama coming to office. If you, you like the insurance, you can keep it. You like the doctor, you can keep it. Lie, you know he's lying. Now, now watch this here. Now, watch. I want you to Google this. It ain't a joke. I want you to Google this. I want you to Google HR. Not right now. When I get off, write it down. Google HR. Somebody, if you don't mind, I want you to put this, put this uh, on the screen. Put this, type this in. And share this video as well. Type this in. Google HR, capital H, capital R, 3200, page 1001, 1001. Read lines three and four. Again, HR. 3200, page 1001, lines 3 and 4. Now watch this here. I want you to Google that in a, and look for it in a PDF, a PDF file. HR 3200, page 1001, lines 3 and 4. And I quote, now this is the Obama health care law. This is affordable health care law. Watch this here now. This is what it says. A class 2 device that is implantable. A class 2 device that is implantable that is life supporting and life sustaining. This device is going to be used as a credit card. It's implantable. It's implantable. It's going to be used as a credit card. All your money, all your references, all it's going to replace your identification. It's going to be on that class two device. Thank you there, woman of God. It's going to be on that class two device. Now, that is an Obama health care law. Huh? You look at that. Look at the date of it. I want you to Google it in a PDF form and you're going to see what's up. Watch this here now. A class two device that is life supporting and life sustaining. You can use your credit card to go and make shopping. That will support your life. You can go and pay groceries. You can pay bills. It is supporting you. But you can also use it to sustain your life. What does it mean to sustain? To keep you alive. This class two implantable device is going to be able to keep you alive. Now watch this here now. Look at Revelation. Now this is Obama health care law. Now look at Revelation chapter 13, verse 16. And he, somebody's going to come, and he causes all small and great, and he, whoever this person is, the Antichrist, he causes all, he require all, he force all small children and great adults, rich and poor, free, free society and bound in prison, to receive a mark in the right hand or their forehead that no man can buy or sell except he that have the mark in his right hand or the name or the number of the beast in his right hand or his forehead. That is the Obama health care law. That is Revelation chapter 13 verses 16 through 18. It's in your Bible. Now if we let Obama come and we willing to embrace all of that madness, you ain't going to be no match for the Antichrist. Huh? Obama come out and, and I want you to Google Newsweek magazines. 
Google the first gay president and click on images. Newsweek magazine, 2013, I think it is. Newsweek magazine, they got they identify President Obama as the first gay president. Hallelujah. And as a matter of fact, I did this presentation if I can. I'm gonna put it on, I'm gonna put it on this feed. So you can take a look at it. Now, are we hating on people? No, we're not hating on people. We can't go to heaven hating folks. The only person we can hate and go to heaven is the devil. And you need to hate him or, or Jew him. You need to, to uh, 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 abhor that fellow. I hate it with everything about y'all. But we love people. Obama ain't our problem. And see, see, the, this mark of the beast is not from Obama. It's not from Trump. It's not from Biden. It's not from Bush. It's a devil thing. It's from the devil. My God. And so what's happening, if we fall for a mere man in his tactics, you ain't no match for the devil. So Obama came out and talked about his eyes have been open and he now, he's he going to promote and, and, and same-sex relationship and he's going to make laws requiring if you receive any kind of federal fund, you must make accommodation for individual same-sex desires. Well, you got a little boy say, I'm a girl, so you got, you got to let the boy go to the girl's bathroom and let the boy go to the girl's shower. Garbage! No, you you need you need to let that you need to get that boy delivered, huh? Right now, I'm a licensed clinical social worker, huh? I'm a I'm a licensed clinical social worker. One step underneath a psychiatrist, I could do everything a psychiatrist can do except pre prescribe medication. But if I was in California teaching individuals as to how to come out of that homosexual lifestyle that is known as conversion therapy, I can lose my license and perhaps go to prison. Hello? Right now, to my understanding, it is legal. If you are 20 years old, as long as you're within 10 years, you can have sex with a 10-year-old. Huh? And guess what the church is doing, especially the black church? We want something different, but we're doing the very same old thing that's called insanity. Huh? My God. So again, I want you to Google that. Look at it. Look at it. Uh, uh, HR, House Resolution 3200, page 1001, lines 3 and 4. And I quote, a class 2 device that is implantable, that is life su supporting and life sustaining. It will help you while you're alive or it will keep you alive. And that's going to be required implant in every human being on planet Earth. That's in the Obama health care law. Huh? But, but but guess what happened? We black folks. Huh? And we who are black folks, we who are quote unquote Democrat, we got to go with the Democrat. The devil is a lie. And the Bible said there in 2 Thessalonians, I think it is 2 and verse 4, let no man, let no man, black man, white man, homosexual man, lesbian man, let no man deceive you by any means. God ain't playing, friend. God loves us, but he ain't playing. Listen, God burned down Sodom. Go, he rained down fire from heaven. Huh? One Jehovah was on earth, Jehovah Christ, and the other Jehovah was in heaven, raining fire. The Lord rained down fire from the Lord from heaven and burnt them up. And one of the believers turned back to just see what was really happening, and she got stuck just like that, a pillar of salt. And we got many believers today going to be going to be turned back. Oh, Jesus said, many are going to come to me at that day and say, Lord, have we not cast out devils in your name? They're going to say, Lord, we cast out devils in your name. It takes some power to cast out a devil. And Jesus is not going to say, no, you didn't. You didn't do that. He didn't say that. But he's going to just say, I never knew you. And we got many folks right now who goes to the house of God, who goes to church, who pay their tithes, who shake their pastor's hand, but they got sin in their life. If you got one sin, if you got one sin in your life, it disqualifies you for heaven. How huh? Jesus is coming back for a church. I'm, I'm looking for any spots. I don't see any spots. Jesus is coming back for a church, a body of believers, without spot or wrinkle or blemish or any such thing. And yes, I believe this is the RFID, Radio Frequent ID chip. And listen, and when President Bush was in office, it is reported that he ordered 14 billion of these things, two chip per every human being, just in case some malfunction. It ain't a joke or game, friend. This is real.
Now, back in Bible days, when, when holy men was inspired by the Holy Ghost to write this Bible, when John was on the Isle of Patmos writing the book of Revelation, we didn't have that ability. Huh? But that brother just wrote what the Holy Ghost showed him. He looked into the future. Huh? He looked into the future. My God. And it's real. God, listen, the Bible said righteousness exalts a nation. God's blessing is not upon sin. And the worst sin we can commit is the sin of suicide. You can't repent for suicide. And then the shedding of innocent blood, abortion. <sighs> oh, my Lord. And you think you want to, Lord, we just give you glory. Are you serious? Huh? There are some sins in the Bible you get put to death immediately for. Homosexual is one of them. Murder is another one. And abortion is murder. Homosexuality is an abomination. Huh? Even animals know better than that. You ain't seen no homosexual dog. Homosexual cat. Homo <laughs> homosexual gorilla. <laughs> you ain't seen no homosexual gorilla. <laughs> you ain't seen no homosexual gorilla. And here we are, the greatest of all of God's creation. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. And we're being convinced how much of love. They ain't love that deception. Let no man deceive you by any means. Woo! Glory to God. It's in the Bible. And I believe the Bible. I would rather die believing in the Bible and go to heaven than to believe not the Bible and die and go to a place called hell. But the good news about hell, I'm smiling. There's good news about hell. Nobody stay in hell forever. Did you know that? I know we're preaching this good gospel and we're telling people to get saved because you're going to go to hell. But the good news about hell is nobody stay in hell forever. And that's found in your Bible, Revelation chapter 20. And you can start at verse 10. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, verse 12. And the books were open and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead, you're going to be judged out of the things written in the book. All of your works, all of the things you say, all the things you think, everything you type on Facebook, everything you say is being recorded, meticulously recorded by God. And you're going to have to give an account for it, huh? That's why whenever I speak, I try to make sure I speak the things that become sound doctrine. I make sure I don't hate anybody because people, you're not my problem. The Planet of the Apes, the movie, I didn't like what the human was doing to the apes, but I'm pro-human. I wasn't rooting for the apes. Had I rooted for the apes, I would be subject to the ape. I'm not rooting for the apes. I'm rooting for the human. I'm pro-human. I love you. You ain't my problem. What's driving you might be my problem. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. So I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. I saw the dead. Who are the dead? Those who are unsaved died in their sin. Those who died in their sin. If you got one sin in your life, how many sins did it take for Adam and Eve to get kicked out of the garden? One. How many licks does it take to get to the center of a tussero pot? One. Two. Three. How many sins does it take? One sin is sufficient to get you kicked out forever. Don't, don't take a chance. Jesus said he's coming back for a bride, a church, without, without a spot or wrinkle. Listen, you, you may not have any spots, but you might have your clothes wrinkled. That ain't sufficient in the eyes of God. Jesus is coming back for his righteousness. You know what the Bible said in Isaiah 64 and 6? I want you to read it for yourself. But we all are as an unclean thing. How many? All of us. But we all are as an unclean thing. And then he said, and all of our righteousness. See, we got righteousness too. All of our righteousness are as filthy rags. That word filthy, Isaiah 64 and 6. That word filthy rag is where we get our English word from a minister cloth. Huh? A tampon. A used tampon. Have you ever seen a used tampon, sisters? Brothers, have you ever seen a used tampon? That's your righteousness. That's just how good you are. Huh? At your best, you are minister cloth. That ain't my word. It's Bible. Now, you're going to take that before God? You're going to hold that old filthy, nasty, stinky? Oh, get that up. You're going to use it at the dinner table. You're going to pick it up at the dinner table, baby. Look what I found, baby. Baby, look at, look at, baby, look at my cloth. Look at my minister cloth, huh? You're going to put that in front of your baby? 
You gonna put that in front of your husband? Baby, look, look at my minister cloth. You see that spot right there? That's your righteousness in front of God. Hello, somebody. That ain't my word. That's in your Bible, Isaiah 64 and 6. But we all, how many all of us are as unclean things? And all our righteousness that our best state is a minister cloth. Lord, you're gonna hold up. Lord, this is why you should let me into heaven. That woman with the issue of blood, she's bleeding every day. She's dripping blood every day, every day. And she's going to take that thing off and say, Jesus, you're going to stand in front of God. You're going to see the righteousness of God, the righteousness of his son, Jesus. And you're going to hold up this minister cloth and say, Jesus, this is my righteousness. I, I'm as righteous, I'm as righteous as you are. I think it's found in your Bible, Acts chapter 17, verse 30 and 31. In the time of this ignorant, God winked that, but now God commanded man everywhere to repent. Why? Because he was put in a day into which he's going to judge the whole world in righteousness. He's going to use his righteousness. He's going to compare your righteousness to his righteousness. If there's not an even match, you don't get to heaven. Now, your righteousness, keep in mind, it's your best state. You smell good. You look good. Girl, you, girl, you want good look. Girl, you look good. Brother, man, brother, you look good. What's, man, you look wonderful. You are minister cloth. A used minister cloth. And God going to compare your righteousness to his righteousness, and you're going to be found lacking. My God. You better take on his righteousness. You're not, I'm telling you, ain't no joke. You got to, listen, listen. Listen, you got a better chance of going to hell. You got a better chance. No, a snowball. A snowball got a better chance in hell than you do getting to heaven in sin. Huh? 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 Hey, it ain't a joke. It, it's God's word. Everything I'm sharing with you is scripture, friend. Just believe God. Don't let the love of God deceive you. And the love of God will not deceive you. But if you misunderstand the love of God, you will deceive yourself. Can I say that again? If you misunderstand the love of God, you will deceive yourself. The love of God is not a license for you to stay in sin. Huh? The love of God. Listen, the police give you another chance. It doesn't mean you just go and do what he just gave you another chance for. Huh? If you are speeding, he said, I'm not going to give you a ticket. I want you to slow down. Huh? All the police love me. He didn't give me a ticket. So I'm going to drive the same speed what he just stopped me for. That, that, that's not the love of God. God's love is not giving you a chance to continue in sin, Romans 6. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. God what? God forbid. Huh? Listen, there's a judgment coming that's going to be worse than any absolute, altogether, anything you can imagine. Listen, God burned up whole cities. God did it. That loving, kind, sweet, gentle God, he did it. My God, that same God destroyed, flooded the whole world. Everything in the earth that had breath died except Noah and the eight person. Everything died. Huh? Listen, my brother, my sister, Psalm 7, 11, God judges the righteous and God is angry with the wicked every day. Huh? God judges the righteous in Psalm 7 11, and God is angry. Who is saying, I don't want my wife to be angry with me. Huh? But you want almighty, holy, righteous God to be angry with you? God forbid, Father, forgive me. Wash me, deliver me, set me free. God is angry with the wicked every day. Now, let me say this here right quick. He used to be angry with the wicked every day. You know why he's no longer angry with the wicked? Because all of his anger, all of his fiery indignation all was poured out upon Jesus at the cross. Jesus died because of me and he died for me. All of God's wrath fell upon Jesus on my behalf, on your behalf. He's no longer angry with you. His love and his grace give you a space to repent. Huh? His love is not just giving you a license to continue in sin. And when I get to heaven, I'm going to turn. I'm going to see what God's going to do. No, friend. You can read the Bible and see what God is going to do. Right now, you can know what God is going to do. Watch this here now. Then the book of St. John chapter 8, there was a woman who was caught in the very act of adultery. She was caught in the very act of adultery. You know, you're not in adultery by yourself. But they brought the woman, but they didn't bring the man. They threw the woman down in front of Jesus. 
They said, Jesus, this woman was caught in the very act of adultery. We caught her in the very act of adultery. That, then they said, now the law said, I think that's found in Leviticus 20 and verse 10 or 10 and 20. Leviticus 20 and 10 or 10 and 20. They said, but now the law says such shall be stoned. If you're caught in adultery, if you're an adulterer, you should be, you should be stoned to death. God gave the Ten Commandments and the sixth, the seventh commandment was, thou shall not commit adultery. That's a death penalty sin. Oh my God. And these religious individuals said, Jesus, this woman, the law said she shall be stoned. But what do you say? They tried to entrap Jesus. Jesus stooped down on the ground and began to write in the ground as though he heard them not. Oh my God. And they kept asking Jesus, what do you say? She should be stoned according to the law of Moses. She should be stoned. Jesus raised up and he looked at them. And he said, he that is without sin among you, not among us, but he that is without sin among you, let him cast the first stone. Oh, and, and they wanted to throw so bad, but they began to, they was convicted of their own conscience, John chapter eight, and they began to drop their stones from the elders to the least. And they all walked away and Jesus stooped back down, writing in the ground. Jesus looked at the, he asked the woman, woman. Where are your, where are those dying accusers? Where are your accusers? Does any man condemn thee? Oh my God. And she said, no man, Lord. She didn't say no man, sir. She didn't say no man, rabbi. She said, no man, Lord. When she said no man, Lord, that means she believed that he's the Messiah. Salvation kicked in. Jesus said, neither do I condemn thee. Some people stop right there. Don't stop right there. Read the next portion. And then Jesus said, go and sin no more. Go and don't commit adultery anymore. Some of you want to come and repent and continue in your sin. Not so. It ain't going to work, friend. You won't get to heaven. My God. When he said, go and sin no more. He wants you to go and leave, the, leave that woman alone. That's not your wife. Leave that man alone. That's not your husband. Leave you two men. Stop your sexing up. That's abominable. That's perversion. Hallelujah. Go and sin no more. Put the crack pipe down. Huh? But I, I got a habit. I'm a habit breaker. I got an addiction. I'm an addiction breaker. He's the addiction specialist. He can set you, if you want to be free, he can set you free. If you want to be made whole, he can make you whole. Hello, somebody. I say, if you want to be made whole, he can make you whole. Won't he make you clean on the inside? I like 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous, the ungodly, shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven? Neither fornicators, liars, adulterers, and feminine. You may not be a full-fledged homosexual, <laughs> but you're a man. You just got feminine work. You ain't going to make it in. That's not my word. I just believe what, what he said. And then he said there in verse 11, and, but, but such were some of you. Some of you were homosexual, but you're saved now. Some of you were liars, but you don't lie anymore now. Some of you were thieves. Some of you were adulterers. Some of you were fornicators. Some of you was crackhead, but you don't do those things anymore. You are washed. You are clean. You are sanctified. Hallelujah. Won't he make you clean on the inside? So Jesus said, woman, go and sin no more. Stop the sin and watch the sin out. Neither do I condemn thee. Then in St. John chapter 3, verse 16, you know this verse, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Do you believe in him? Do you believe it in him? ETAs continue to believe. When you are in sin, you are no longer a believer. Huh? If the police tell you to slow down, I'm going to give you a ticket. You, your mama tell you, boy, if you do that one more time, I'll whoop you. And you do it again. You don't believe mama. You think mama is lying to you. I'm going to tell your dad when you get home, boy. Huh? And you do it again. <laughs> you do it again. Huh? Because your mama hug you and love you, tell how much she love you. And you, I'm going to tell dad. I'm going to tell your daddy on you, boy. Get, he call, she called you all your... Willie Edward Johnson, get in there, sit down. Ooh, she called me my whole name. She must really be... I'm going to tell your dad on you. I'm going to tell Big Frank on you when you get home. No, no, I'm, okay, mom. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> mom, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, 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 stop. Huh? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son, verse John 3, 6, 3, 17. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. Jesus did not come to condemn you. Jesus did not come to sentence you. Jesus did not come to judge you. Jesus come to be condemned for you. Jesus come to die in your place. 
My God, look what it said. For Jesus, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. For the world is condemned already. Every man, woman, boy, and girl with any sin, I don't care what it is. You got a little white lie in your life. You like to use profanity every once in a while. You like to curse every once in a while. You like to cuss every once in a while. You just like your mama. You go, that was, I, I'm just like my mom. You're going to die and go straight to hell. You're already guilty and sentenced to hell. That ain't my word, friend. Read it for yourself. John 3, 16, 17, 18. For the world, the sinner is condemned already. You're not, wait, you're not waiting to get to heaven to, to, to determine. You're not waiting to stand in front of God to determine where you're going to go. It is already sentence upon you where you're going to go when you die. Right now. Well, it's between them and God. No, it is, it is already settled right now where you go. If you got sin in your life, you're on your way to hell right now. Right now. It ain't my word. Read it for yourself and believe it. When you read it, believe it. I don't care what your emotions say. I don't care what your feelings say. When you read the word of God, believe it just like it is. See, many of us, we try to go by our emotions. Truth could care less about your emotions. Huh? I, I, hear, I hear about little babies falling out of second story windows. Huh? You, you think gravity going to say, oh, here comes a little baby. No, let her down easy. No, you're going to fall to your death. Yes, you're a little baby. You think a lie, oh, this little baby fell into my pit. Huh? We're going to have mercy on you. Get out of here, little baby. No, this is a free, simple meal. It ain't a joke or game, friend. My God. Huh? John 3, 17, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but the wor that, that the world might be saved. For the world is condemned already. Why? Because they have more pleasure and darkness. Men love darkness rather than light. Why? Because their deeds are evil. You're condemned already. You are already sentenced to hell while you are breathing on earth. Woohoo! Pot, hey, hey. Oh, oh, come on, we're having a good time. Boom. Woo, we have, oh, come on, girl, come on, go. You are you on the dance floor, just waiting to give your last breath on the dance floor. You're gonna fall, your body gonna hit the floor, your spirit and your soul gonna go straight to hell. Huh? You see? <laughs> it's a powerful stuff. <laughs> You're gonna have a heart attack and go straight to hell. Instantly. Huh? Whew. I tried to snort some cocaine. Huh? <laughs> you're going to die and go straight to hell instantly. And you're going to know that you're there. It's in your Bible. At Luke chapter 16, started verse 19. Luke at Luke's chapter 16, started verse 19. Read down to the verse 31. You're going to see where this rich man, there was a certain rich man who fared sumptuously every day. Everything was good for that rich man every day. And there was a poor beggar by the name of Lazarus. Somebody picked the, the beggar up and laid him at the rich man's gates full of swords. Huh? And the beggar was, please, let me have the crumbs that fall from your table, please. And the rich man was too busy. He was too all of that plus a bag of chips and a dip to help the poor beggar. And it came to pass that the beggar died. And, it, and, and he was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. At that time, remember Jesus on the cross said, this day you shall be with me in paradise. Abraham's bosom was in the middle of the earth, in the heart of the earth. Before, before people, uh, before uh, Jesus came, when believers died, they went down in the middle heart of the earth. They couldn't go to heaven yet. They had to be saved to get there. But they was looking for the coming of Jesus. And those who were looking for the coming of Jesus went down to a place called Abraham's bosom. That's in your Bible. My God. Then the beggar, and the beggar died, and he was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. Look, I want you to put this, somebody write this verse down. Luke chapter 16, verses 19 through 31. I want you to read it. It is not a parable. Some people say that's a parable. Jesus never used names and parables. But in this actual event, Jesus used at least three names. He used Lazarus' name, Moses' name, and Abraham's name. He never used names and parables. This is an actual event. I don't care how many, how many years you've been going to church. I don't care how many, how many times you've been reading your Bible. Believe the word of God. Don't take God for granted. Don't take his love for granted. Don't take his holiness for granted. 
And the Bible said the rich man also died. And the rich man also died. And in hell, he looked up his eyes, being in torments. Oh, my God. I'm sure this rich man had a nice funeral. I'm sure his five brothers and his father, they came by and they talked about how wonderful Dives, they call him Dives, how wonderful he was. But Dives is in hell. Now, he didn't go to hell because he was rich. He went to hell because he was covetous. Huh? He didn't want to share. He didn't, want, he, didn't, he didn't believe in Jesus. He didn't give his life to God. He wasn't following the God of Abraham. And the poor beggar didn't go to heaven because, or Abraham Putin because he was poor. He went because he was looking for the coming of Jesus. Are you really looking for the coming of Jesus? And he that held this hope in himself, purify himself even as he is pure. Oh, my brother, my sister, purify yourself and be ready. If you fall for the morning men, you ain't going to stand against the Antichrist. That fellow's going to come smoother than hot butter. And that rich man died, and in hell he opened up his eyes, been in torments. Right now, if you die, if you give your last breath right now, if you don't know Jesus, if you got one sin in your life, see, see, that's some things God can't do. Did you hear that? God is omnipotent, meaning he's all powerful. He's omniscient, meaning he's all knowing. He's omnibenevolent, meaning he's all love or omnigape. He's all love. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere at the same time. Even though he's all powerful, there are some things he cannot do. God can't lie. It's impossible for God to lie. You know what else God can't do? God cannot allow a, an unregenerated or unrepentant sinner get to heaven. Oh, he can't let you get in. He require everybody to come the same way through the cross. On your knees at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light. Oh, he can't let you get to heaven with sin in your life. He can't do it. Especially when he's able to break every habit. Especially when he's able to break the back of the enemy. I don't care what you're going through, friend. I'm telling you, you're going to love him. If you taste him, you're going to love him. If you taste him, you're going to want more. Hallelujah. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. He is good. My God, I taste him back in 83. Huh? And I got addicted to him. I got addicted to him. I, got, I taste him back in 83. Oh, I got addicted to him. Mm, that was good. Mm, I want some more. Oh, God. Hallelujah. April 10th, 1983. That's when I got addicted to him. I love him. I love him right now. And I love you too. I'm not upset at you. I love you because you're not my problem. Huh? Human ain't my problem. People ain't my problem. The devil is my problem. Ephesians 6 and 12. We wrestle, we fight, not against flesh and blood. But we're fighting against evil spirits trying to take over the bodies of flesh and blood. Oh, listen. So the Lord Jesus Christ loves you again. This Antichrist fella is going to come and he's going to be smooth. Sitting in the temple, professing and the world. Oh my God. The whole world. I think that Revelation chapter 13, verse 8, the whole world is going to follow after the Antichrist. How many? The whole world, every unsaved person on planet Earth is going to follow after the Antichrist. Thinking, now keep in mind the word anti means to be a substitute Christ. He's a substitute Messiah. Revelation chapter 6, verse 2 said the Antichrist is going to come riding a white horse with a bow without an error. I come in peace. A person who got a revolver, who got a who got a a, a, a tech nine, that person does not. But without bullets in it, he's just a bluff. He, it's not his intention to hurt you. But if he got bullets in it, he pointing at you, he could do you some danger. But this antichrist is going to come with the bow without an arrow. I come in peace. But he's an antichrist. He's a substitute Christ. He's a pretend Christ, and many are going to think that he is the Messiah. Many are going to think that he is indeed the long-awaited Christ. See, Jesus said there in the book of, I think it's St. John, he said, I come in my Father's name, talking to the Jews. I come in my Father's name, Jews. The Jews are still waiting for the Messiah to come. They didn't receive Jesus as the Messiah. They're still waiting for him to come. Huh? The one who was nailed to the cross, nailed to the tree, cursed is everyone that hanging on the tree, so he can't be our Messiah. So the Jews are still waiting for the Messiah to come. So this Antichrist, the pretend Christ, it's going to come, and the Jews going to embrace him, thinking that he's the Messiah. You know, the Muslims, one billion plus people are waiting for their Messiah, the Ma'adi, to come. They are waiting for their Messiah to come. Oh my God! And when this Antichrist comes, they're going to think that he is the he is their long awaited Messiah, and they're going to embrace him. Over two billion people instantly going to be deceived. Instantly, 
The Bible mentioned in Revelation chapter 9, 18. By these three, the smoke, the fire, and the brimstone, one third of the earth population is going to be wiped out, killed by nuclear explosion. Nuclear war is coming, friend. It is believed that the United States of America, from sea to shining sea, is going to be wiped off the map by nuclear explosion. We better get right with God and do it now. Get right with God. He will show you how down at the cross where he shed his blood. Hallelujah. Get right with God. Get right. Get right with God. Some of you are looking at people. Some of you are allowing the sins of preachers. Some of you are allowing the sins and the evil behavior of certain people who call themselves Christians stopped you from seeing Jesus. That's a trick of the enemy, friend. The one who's in sin is going to die and go to hell. And you, because you're looking at them, allowing their behaviors to cause you not to receive Christ, you're going to die and go to hell too. I defy, I describe the devil as an evil genius. The devil is an evil genius. He's a master strategist. He's manipulative. He's cunning. He's conniving. He's a subtle, lying deceiver at the top of his game. How conniving and subtle is the devil? That fella is so conniving, he convinces 123 to 128 people here in America every day to take their own lives. How conniving is the devil? He, could, he convinces, talks to the mind of people, and people thinking themselves, and I want to kill myself. That ain't you saying that. That's the devil making you think you're saying that. And they take their own lives, and they open their eyes in hell. How conniving is the devil? That devil is so conniving. He got this man. Huh? He got this man. Who, this man really feels on the inside that he's a woman. He's not trying to hurt anybody. He's not trying to deceive anybody. He's not trying to misuse anybody. He's not trying to convince anybody in his own mind and in his own body. He believes he's a woman trapped in a man's body. He believes that he's a woman. But unfortunately, he, he, he was born with male parts. He's really convinced that he's a woman. With, with female, well, he's a woman with male parts. That old conniving, evil, genius, manipulative, conniving, subtle, lying devil got this man, this biological man, convinced in his mind without any harm to anybody, convinced that he's a woman. And so guess what he does? Every morning when he wakes up and he gets out of the shower, he looks in the mirror. Oh, oh, I'm a woman. I'm not supposed to have that. How, how conniving and convincing is this old no good for nothing devil? He convinces that man that he's a woman. And that man going to get himself cut off, get himself fixed up, and marry a man. And the man he marries doesn't know that he's a man. He got himself fixed up so good. Got booze, got his breath, got his, 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 his Adam apple. He got everything. And the man that he married doesn't know that he's a man. He think, he think he's married to a woman, but he's married to a man. He think he's copulating, having sex with a woman, but he's having sex with a man. Huh? He's confessed. You got these precious sister, good healthy D-side breasts, good healthy breasts. Nothing wrong with them. But they think they're a man. How evil is that devil? How conniving is that devil? He got this woman think that she's a man. She going to get two hefty breasts cut off. Huh? She's beginning to take hormones so her facial hair could grow out. Huh? Huh? And she thinks she's a man. Mean no harm. They mean no harm. Huh? But that line convincing evil, no good for nothing devil got him convinced. Now, I will lose my license if I, if I once I explain to them, hey, you, that's, a, that's a, a spirit of perversion in you. Huh? That's a spirit. If you get the spirit cast, if you get that spirit cast out of you, and only Holy Ghost filled Christians can do it, if you get that spirit cast out of you, all of your desires, that, 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 that man who thinks he's a woman, he's going to pop up. Oh, I'm a man. I'm a man. I ain't, ain't no woman. Huh? But now he got his stuff cut off. Huh? Now he's putting on britches again, but, but he got his stuff cut off. 
But God, guess what he want to do now? He's a man. He knows he's a man. Huh? And sister see him. Well, that's a good that's one good looking brother there. But she doesn't know he got his stuff cut off. At one time, he thought he was a woman. And guess what he want? I want to marry. I want to marry. I want to get married. And guess what he does? He see this lady and, and he begin to talk to her. And he genuinely saved. He's saved. He saved, saved, sanctified, the Holy Ghost field, but his stuff cut off. Huh? Because, because the devil had him deceived, making him think that he was a woman. But now he, he wants to marry, so he, he about to tell her, you know what? Um, you know what? Hey, I, I, I really like you, but I got, I got something to tell you. You know, before I came to Christ, um, I, um, mm, uh, how can I say this? I got castrated. She going to say, what? I got castrated. And as he's confessing the truth to her, all of a sudden he feels something down there. God, God, listen, God told the disciples, I want you to go. If you see somebody with a short arm, I want you to make their arm grow back. If you see somebody with a man, got no legs, I want you to command the legs to grow back. Huh? That man got serious with God. And guess what? His pride began to grow back. Ah! Ah! And then I've heard, women got their breasts removed. I heard them growing back. Hello, friend. God loves you. God, listen, don't you know that bring glory to God? Hallelujah. Huh? I heard, well, I heard, brother, his tongue was removed. Didn't have a tongue in his mouth. Went to the man of God. The man of God said, open your mouth. Begin to play with the portion of the tongue back there. He didn't have a tongue. And begin to rub his finger back in his mouth and said, grow, grow, grow. And right there in the, the right there in the auditorium of the church, that brother tongue grew right back, and he gonna ride. <laughs> Look, <laughs> listen. Is there anything hard for God? God loves you. God ain't upset at you. God ain't your problem. Hallelujah. God loves you more than you can imagine. Don't you know it gives God glory? I heard there was another situation. A girl, she was so she, her, she was stunted growth. She couldn't grow any higher. Grown lady almost, but she couldn't grow anymore. And the man of God commanded, grow, 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 grow. And right there in the church auditorium, that little sister went from like this here in front of everybody, start growing right in front of everybody. Is there anything hard for God? You know, Jesus gave us a command in the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verses 7 to 8. Seven and eight. And as you go, I want you to preach the gospel saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I want you to heal the sick. I want you to cleanse the lepers. I want you to cast out devils and I want you to raise the dead. If you can raise the dead, you can make an arm grow out. I saw this with my own eyes right here at uh, Tabernacle Praise Church of God in Christ over on Constantinople a few years ago. I saw this lady. I saw this evangelist. What's the woman of God's name? Uh, I can't recall her name. Her name might come back. But I saw this woman of God. This man was blind, legally blind. <laughs> and she got her fingers and began to rub in the brother's eyes. And instantly, I can see! <laughs> Pastor Michael Jackson, uh, Tabernacle Praise, Church of God of Christ, Constantinople, right off of Alexander and, um, what is that? Alexander and Buffalo, I think it is. Brother received his sight. And as he was walking around, I said, I can see, I did this here. I want to verify, I did this here. And when I put up three fingers, guess what he did? He looked at me and he put up three fingers. I can see you, Pastor Johnson. Huh? Right here in this city, do not tempt revival. I seen a sister with a metal rod in her neck. She could all she, the way she had to move was like this here. That's it. But the man of God command them, commanded the metal rod to loose. And now this sister, right there in the service, we got it on tape. And she's doing all of this. Completely, instantly healed. God love you. God ain't a man at you. He love you. So listen. Trump is not the Antichrist. Obama is not the Antichrist. Biden is not the Antichrist. If we fall for any of them, ye ain't no match for God. Ye ain't no, not, I mean, ye ain't no match for the Antichrist. Listen, listen. Why do I, why do I love uh, Trump? Because of the policies of Trump. Huh? Huh? The Republican Party policy. It's not about the person. It's about their policies. And again, I have so many, I have several people. Well, you know what? 
uh, even I'm a Democrat, but I don't believe in abortion. If you vote for the party, if you vote for the platform, that's what the platform is going to push. They're going to push their beliefs. They're going to push their policies. Well, I didn't vote for Trump because I didn't like his attitude, but all of his policies, I like all the Republican Party policies. Trump is going to be out of office within four years. He's going to be out of office in four years. But the policy is going to remain. Obama was out of office four years. Been four years now. And his policies are still there. Right now, it is still the law of the land for you to get that RFID chip in your hand. That is the Obama health care law. HR 3200, page 1001, line 3 and 4. A class 2 device that is implantable. That is life supporting and life sustaining. It will help you purchase or it will help you stay alive. Revelation 13, 16, and he causes all small and great rich and poor to receive a mark in the right hand or forehead that no man can buy or sell. When you go into some of these churches, we're being conditioned. When you go into some of these businesses, they want to put this sensor up to the head to, head to see what your temperature is. And I ask them, is that the mark? Is that you searching for the mark of the beast? You searching for the microchip? We're being conditioned. Go to Walmart. Go, go to these health meters. Go back to the pharmacy party and, and look and put your arm in, and get your blood pressure check at that health meter. Stick your right hand down underneath. You're going to see that red light flashing right underneath, right under your right hand. You don't think we're being con conditioned to receive this microchip implant? Oh, my Lord. You don't think we're being conditioned? Don't you take that chip? It ain't a joke, okay? Yes, you're going to die. And whoever get that uh, chip, whoever get the mark of the beast, the number of his name, or the image of the beast, you're going to die and go straight to hell forever. Well, you're not going to be in hell forever. You're going to leave hell and be cast into the lake of fire. That's in your Bible, Revelation chapter 10 through 15. Read it. And death and hell was cast into the lake of fire. And whosoever name was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Get right with God. When? And do it now. Get right with God. He will show you how. Down at the cross. Where he shed his blood. Get right with God. Get right, get right with God. Listen, listen. Life is not about physical things. Life is about eternity. Life is about spiritual things. This election is not about flesh and blood, two natural men. This election is about good and evil. Huh? Huh? That's what it's about, friend. Listen, the Lord Jesus Christ loves you more than you can imagine. The Antichrist is going to come sitting in the temple of God. He's going to sit in God's temple, professing himself to be God. And how many millions and billions are going to reach out to him thinking that he is very God. Thinking that he is very Christ. I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to be with me on tonight. I love you. I love you. Hallelujah. The earth has been invaded by illegal aliens from heaven. When Lucifer came down, he brought, Lucifer was a holy, beautiful, glorious angel. But when he fell, he fell from heaven. He was kicked out of heaven. He brought one third of spirits down to this physical place. They're aliens that don't belong down here. This is a physical place for physical creatures, physical beings. They're not for spirit beings. And those illegal aliens who fell from, who fell from heaven is now down here on earth working in the lives of men. Ephesians 6 and 12. For me. Ephesians 6 and 10. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Man is not our problem, but we wrestle against principalities. We wrestle against persons without bodies. Human are not our problem. Trump is not our problem. Biden is not our problem. But what they believe, their policies... Oh, look what Biden told this woman. Listen, if an eight-year-old want to come and say, Mama, I know, I'm a, I, know I got a male genitalia, but I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to transition to a girl. I'm going to be a, trans, a transgender. Oh, that is so nice. And Biden said, yes, that sounds good. I support that. Biden said he support that. Ah, we're not fighting against a man, Biden, but that philosophy is directly from the pits of hell. It ain't a joker game, friend. It is real. That's what we're fighting against. It's a battle of the ideas. 
What philosophy are you coming from? Who's teaching you what you're believing? It is not a joke or game, friend. It's real. That's what it's all about. Huh? That's what it's all about. Huh? You want to go to the bathroom? I can identify. Listen, if I want to identify as a woman, guess what? Woohoo! We're so happy for you. If I want to identify as white, is that possible? Huh? Elizabeth, Elizabeth Warren identified as an Indian. Huh? Kamala Harris identified as black. Huh? Who else? Who else? So if I want to, I'm, I'm white. I need a loan. Well, this, these loans are just for women. Well, I want to identify as a woman and you can't deny me. Well, well, you got to be, you got to be at least, you can't be any taller than five feet. Well, I identify as 411. So, so, but no, 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 no. You can't go by that. You got to go by what I identify as. And we're going to fall for that? We're going to go? We're going to do that? Are you serious? So the enemy of our soul is, that fella's playing tricks with us. I mean, we're looking at him. We're still falling for him. We saw the man put a bullet in the gun. We saw him do it. But he convinced us there's no bullet in the gun. Go ahead and pull the trigger. There's no bullet in it. You just, you thought your eyes tricked you. Go ahead and pull it. And guess what we do? See, Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20 said, Woe unto them that call good evil. Woe! Until them that call good evil and evil good. Huh? Man, y'all love each other. You two brothers, y'all two guys love each other. That is so nice. That is so good. That ain't good. That's evil. Woe unto you for believing that. Huh? Y'all y'all love each other? Kamala Harris, you know, she performed, I think, the first gay marriage in, uh, in, in there in California. Huh? Front gate is going to open. Huh? What's going what's to happen when pastors say, listen, we can't do same-sex marriage? What's going to happen? You don't, you don't think persecution going to come? Huh? You don't think so? Oh, it ain't a joke, friend. It matters who we vote for. Huh? Oh, my God. Oh, my Lord. It ain't a joke or game, friend. Huh? Biden said, listen, I, I'm going to open up to Muslims. I'm going to, the first day I get in the office, I want all Muslims to come. Don't you think Muslims are going to come just going to try? They don't want to just come to America for peace. They want to come and change America law. They want Sharia law. Sister, if you got your faith uncovered in a Muslim society, you're going to be persecuted. You're going to be arrested. And that's what you want to vote for? Ain't no joke or game, friend. Do you, not, do you not know Ethiopia and the Middle East were Christian before it was Islam? It was Christian. In the book of Acts chapter 8, the Ethiopian eunuch, he was the first Christian in Ethiopia. But look what happened. And Christianity was on the scene about 600 years before Muhammad came on the scene. And look what Islam did. Islam don't come. We preach and evangelize. We're going to love you if you say yes or no to Jesus. Not Islam. You convert to Islam or you die. It's going to be the same thing right here in the U.S. If you let it. It ain't a joke or game, friend. Oh, my God. So listen, thank God for President Trump being the president for the next four years. And it's a God thing. And if it's not, we in trouble. <laughs> if, 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 if Biden does everything he wants to do and he Kamala wants to do, we in trouble. America's in trouble. Ain't no joke. Listen, the Lord Jesus Christ love you. If you fall for mere men, you're not going to stand against the Antichrist. Give your heart to Jesus. Love everybody. Forgive everybody. Respect everybody. Be kind to everybody, starting with yourself. Whatever you do, in the event of air cabin pressure loss, oxygen mask will fall. Secure your own mask before you try to assist someone else. Make sure you are Acts 2 and 40. With many other words, he exhorted the people saying, save yourself. Please make sure you're saved. Make sure you're right with God. God loves you. Listen, God reads hard. You may not have the appropriate words. You may not know exactly what they say, but he knows the sincerity of your heart. He loves you. He's not mad at you. Again, I want you to give me a policy that is anti-Bible, anti-God from the Republican Party. If you give me a policy, not a behavior of any particular candidate or any particular person of the Republican Party, there are homosexuals in the Republican Party. There are atheists in the Republican Party. There are liars and thieves. There are adulterers in the Republican Party. But the Republican Party platform policies are not based on any of those things. However, there are Democrat policies, 
Same-sex marriage, that's a policy. They run on that platform. Abortion, they run on that platform. Huh? That's a part of their platform. Give me a Republican Party policy. Be the first one to give me that. And I'm, I will inbox you. And if you gave me a policy of Republican Party that disagrees with the Bible, I inbox you. Uh, I will cash app you $25 tonight. Listen, the Lord Jesus Christ loves you. Forgive people, love people, respect people, be kind to people, starting with yourself. Share this video. I love you. God bless you in Jesus' name. By this, you all men know you're my disciple, that you have love one to another. Do you love me? Not like me. Do you love me? I love you. God bless you in Jesus' name. Let's get to heaven together. I want to see you in the rapture. When we're taken off, I want to be able to look. Hey, there you go, Sister Lisa. I love you. We're on our way. Oh, my God. We're on our way. We're on our way. Hallelujah. Sister Jennifer, hello, I see you on our way. Let's get to heaven together, amen. Let's get there. Sister Carolyn, let's get to heaven together, I see you. Oh, brother AC, let's get to heaven. Let's love one another. Let's not make that lying devil get on our skin and cause us to hate one another. By, all, by this, you all men know you're my disciple. You love me. You love each other. That's how we know that we're believers. God bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. And amen. Share this video. Amen. Amen.